Hey everyone, welcome back to the VMP Performance Channel. I'm Justin and I'm here on the dyno with Project Snowbird, our 2020 Shelby GT500. Today we are going to be testing intercooler cores. So we have learned from experience that the 2020 Shelby GT500 does not exactly have the best intercooling system once you raise the boost. It's good from the factory at factory boost levels, but as you go up in boost, it begins to show its limitations and there is a need for better cooling to keep the intake air temps under control. If you can't keep those intake air temps under control, you can't put as much time in it as you want, you don't get the performance out of the supercharger that you want, and just things aren't great. So that is what we're going to address today. We're going to be testing this intercooler core and showing you the results. So let's hop in the car and get started. So our test procedure for evaluating the stock intercooler is gonna be three back-to-back -back pulls in fourth gear. Our engine coolant temperature has stabilized at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see that our intake air temps are starting around 108 after the intercooler core and actually about 108 at the air filter too because the engine bay is open and there's no airflow over the car. So that's a pretty normal situation on the dyno. Now we've made these three back-to-back -back pulls. We're gonna review the data. That's gonna tell us a whole lot. If you look here at the first pull, we started out at a pretty cool 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Our engine coolant temperature's in check. Our air intake temp is 101 degrees, which the hood's open. There's not a lot of airflow over the car. That's perfect. This temperature rises to 155 at the end of the pull. And that's just where we stop counting. It actually goes to 162. Quick math says that's a delta of about 45 degrees. Yeah, about 45, 46 degrees. So the car is making good power at that point, about 938 to the wheels. And this is where things get interesting. We go and make subsequent pulls temperature spikes to 170 degrees engine coolant temperature is still in check and the power drops to 923 now this calibration is set up to pull timing as soon as intake air temperature goes over 150 post intercooler downstream so we are also affected by that on the third pull the car went to 171 degrees again Engine coolant temperature is still decently in check, but the intercooler core brick is just not able to pull the heat out. We are seeing the water in the system heat soak a little bit, but any type of temperature rise like this is just pretty much uncontrollable. If we go back to the last time we were at the track with Rebecca and she was racing Snowbird, we were able to cool the car down enough between runs and start at 97 degrees intake air temperature but we still finished at 171 going through the traps. What we've learned about the factory intercooler brick on all these new Predator engines is that it's decent for the stock boost level of about 12 PSI. As soon as you pulley down with upper pulleys and lower pulleys, temps just go out of control. Ford never designed it for that. And it's pretty much a necessity that it be upgraded because downstream air temps over 150 just are not good for your tuner. We've got a pull timing, 93, E85, race gas, whatever. When they go above 150 degrees, it's not a good thing. I'll throw these graphs up on the screen for everybody to see. Now that we know the problem, we are gonna get one of the new intercooler cores swapped in and see how it does.
Okay, so the stock brick CAC intercooler core, whatever you want to call it, comes out. And we will let it cool off for a minute and compare it to the new one for you. So we got the stock brick out. It is a uh, fairly heavy piece. It's got cast aluminum in tanks. It's uh, an intercooler brick, also known as a charge air cooler. So like I said, this piece works decently at stock boost levels. As we go up in boost though, we see issues. And that is where the new VMP intercooler upgrade comes in. This is a whole new tube and fin profile. This is in partnership with PWR, who are cooling experts. And we're gonna get it swapped in and show you the A to B difference on the dyno. So this new core is a whole lot lighter, a whole lot easier to lift onto the top of the engine. It drops right in place of the factory one. As you can see, there's a little alignment pin right here. We will take the intercooler support rails and just place them here. Actually, this is for the other side. These bolts do need to have Loctite, but we are only temporarily assembling this car to make a couple of dyno pulls and show you the results of the 68 millimeter core. So the top and the sides of this intercooler core are exactly the same dimensions as stock. So the factory lid is just gonna go right back on top. You've got to get it placed over here, lift up the plastic and the metal behind it, and kind of slip it all right over here. The lid has alignment pins that hold it in place, so we're going to get all our bolts installed, torque them down, reinstall our water manifold, and make some dyno pulls. All right, we got our new core swapped in. We're going to leave the strut tower off, by the way. We're at 108 starting downstream air temp IET2, as it's called on the data logs. We're gonna slow it down to 2,000 RPMs and make a pull. All the way to 8,000 RPMs. Save our dyno pull and let's see what we get. A respectable number 940 rear wheel horsepower and our air temps are looking better already I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with two more back-to-back -back pulls and review the data afterwards So uh, we made this comparison between the two cores as accurate as possible. We did three back-to-back -back pulls, and I am going to show you the data. Our IET2 started at 109 degrees Fahrenheit, and it finished up around 141 at 8100 RPM. The intercooler core is working good. Like I said earlier, it made 940 rear wheel horsepower. We go to our second pull and we can begin to see that the water itself is heating up. We started at 124 degrees and we rose to about 152, 153, 154 degrees if you go all the way to the rev limiter. So once again, only a 26, 27 degree rise. On that first pull, we only had about a 30, 33 degree rise. And on the final pull, we started at a 135 degree intake air temperature too, and we finished at a 160, 161, 162, maybe 163 if you push it. So all in all, we are seeing about a 25% reduction in air temperature increase on these dyno poles with this new 68 millimeter core offered by VMP, made by PWR. 
I want to tell you something about the dyno. It's the absolute worst case scenario. We don't have a lot of airflow over the car. We are seeing the water itself in the intercooler system heat soak over time, even though the engine cooling system is able to keep up with these multiple pools, the intercooler system is, the starting temperature is rising, rising, rising. So that is something that is affecting our results. But we still have over a 25% decrease in temperature rise with this new 68 millimeter core. However, there's more. We just got in a new 81 millimeter race core, and we're gonna swap that in to Snowbird and test it out and see what the temperature gains are like or are not like with that core. Let's head out front and do that. You just got to see what the 68 millimeter core did on the dyno. The increase in air temperatures during a dyno pull decreased by a good 25%. This core has been used on the current world record holder Shelby GT500 running low nines in the quarter mile Evolutions Performance's silver car, aka the villain. However, we came up with an idea. We said to ourselves, there's still more room in there for a larger intercooler core. So we worked with PWR and created this 81 millimeter core that we are dubbing the race core. We know from previous experience that a thicker intercooler core can often give the air more time to transfer the heat to the water flowing through the core. So in addition to the more efficient bar and plate and fin design that PWR has, this core gives the air more surface area to transfer the heat. So we are gonna get it swapped in and make some dyno pulls and see what it does. On the 81 millimeter race core, the core actually drops below the flange and fits into this big square opening on the blower. That design detail is gonna mean that the top of the core is exactly the same height as stock, so it won't have any clearance problems with the lid installed. Okay, my race core swapped in, 81 millimeter thick. We're gonna send it. after you make a dyno pull is the dyno numbers after you save the run and I didn't want to say anything after that very first run I wanted to make sure that we made our second and third run and we gathered all the data I'm just gonna tell you right now we increased in horsepower by 20 and we saw an inc decrease in air temp by another 10 degrees another 25% so just to go through and do this the same way we did on all the other runs, we started at 108 downstream. We ended up about 129 downstream. So that's pretty good. We only had a 20 degree rise at over 20 PSI of boost on the Predator engine. And then we go to our second run. We start at 120 because our water's getting hotter. We finish about 139, 140 another 20, 21 degree rise. And finally, our third run. Start at 126, we finish at 147, 8200 RPMs, 205 ECT. We are completely below the air temperature retard threshold. My tune is set up to pull timing above 150 degrees Fahrenheit downstream air temp. And this thing is not having to pull any timing at all. That is freaking amazing at over 21, 22 PSI of boost. 
So this this race car, this is where it's at if you have pulled down your new 2020 Shelby GT500. I'm just gonna say that right now. I mean, it's it's pretty obvious. The air temps are so much better that the car is making more horsepower and the temps are staying in check, even in this brutal dyno environment where there's not a lot of airflow over the front of the car. It's, uh, it's just amazing. And I'm really glad that we tried this race core. Like I said, we would not recommend it for everyone because it is thicker and it does create a little bit more of a pressure drop. Our boost before the intercooler core itself was higher. Our boost after the intercooler core was the same because the air was so much cooler. So there you have it. The proof is in the data. I cannot wait for Rebecca to get this thing back to the track. Thank you so much to Jack at PWR for working with us on this new product. It has been amazing working on this Predator engine, working with Jokers and late model throttle and HP tuners, and really getting in there, finding the problems and solving them. At VMP, we have a huge commitment to innovation and fixing problems and making everything better. So until next time, make sure you like, subscribe and share. We've got some links to our website below. Check them out. I'll see you later.